Yo, 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 look, <clears throat> welcome, man, welcome to another week, another dope Thursday of That Good Rule, man, I'm like extremely, extremely honored right now, extremely excited, uh, man, That Good Rule, man, has been really, really good, like, since the start, man. Our family, bro, has really been coming in here, man, really delivering the word of God. Like, you know, I'm talking about, you know, cutting, you know, slicing us up, bro, and I love it. So, man, it's, it's, it's nothing but an honor for me to be um, sharing the word of God with you all this week, this Thursday. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. And, 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 man, I think we're going to have a really, really dope time. So, yeah, man, welcome to another day of that good room, officially. Um, it's your boy, it's your brother, Keon, a.k.a. his name, whatever you want to call me. I, I'm your guy today. And, man, I, I believe God has a really, really good word for all of us today. So, you know, with that being said, I ain't going to hold us too long on, on the, you know, the intro and stuff. So, uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, to come together as a family. Lord God, to learn of your word, to learn of you, Father. I just ask that as a result, Father God, of our obedience to be here today, Father God, we thank you for this platform, Father God. And as a result of us being here, Father God, that you will fertile our hearts and our minds, Father God. Lord God, that this word, Lord God, will go forth, Father God, and it will take root in our lives, Father God, that it will not be snatched up by the enemy in no way, form, or fashion, Father God, but that it will be deposited in our spirit, man, Father God, and that we will be able to eat from it, Father God. Thank you for everyone that's on this live right now, Father God, that you will bless them, Lord God, tremendously, Father God. And I know your desire is for this word, Lord God, to pierce our hearts and our minds, Father God. So I say, Lord God, let it be so. Father, decrease in me, Lord God, that your spirit may increase, Father God, and that this word will be delivered with clarity and simplicity, Father God, that we all will understand. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Man. So, man, with out further ado we gonna go ahead and we gonna get into this message i ain't gonna hold y'all too long i might have seven closes at the end but y'all gotta bear with me that's just what it is so uh <laughs> so man let's get into this lesson for the day we will be coming from jonah the old testament what they call one of the minor prophets jonah so do me a favor and run over to Jonah 1. Before we get like all the way into it, I want to give us a, a, you know how the pastor say, if I had a title, I don't know why we do that. I'm that guy. I do that. If I had a title, no one doggone well, I already got a title. I already got a name for it. But man, look, it is what it is. The title would definitely be for this day would be Lasting Fruit. I'm going to say that again because I want us to really understand. Lasting fruit. If I gave it a subtitle, if I gave it a subtitle, there we go. Uh, the subtitle would be place, position, and posture. I'll say that again. Place, position, and posture. Those three Ps are going to be really, really important, really, really instrumental in what we're going to be talking about um for the remainder of this 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 episode jonah chapter 1 verse 1 through verse 2 says the word of the lord came to jonah son of amittai go to the great city of nineveh and preach against it because its wick wickedness has come up before me i'm gonna read it again it says the word of the lord came to jonah son of amittai go to the great city of nineveh and preach against it because his wickedness has come before me. And that's Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. I'm reading from the New International Version, so 
You know, it might sound a little different to some of y'all King James folks. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my King James folks. And, and I'm a new King James NIV type of guy. But shout out to my King James people. You hear me? You know, we, we that's them D's and them dials. You know, that's them them thistles and them and them thereafters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So shout out to y'all, man. Jonah, chapter one. Just to give us a little backstory of Jonah. The amazing thing about Jonah that I, I, I came to understand through studying is um Jonah doesn't really have a backstory. Um, Jonah is one of those books of the Bible where you find yourself directly in the middle of a story in a person's life as them just going through it. Um, so as we close in on Jonah, as we begin Jonah, it starts off by saying the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Simple as that. It didn't say what we normally are used to. Um, it does say Jonah, the son of Amittai, but usually, you know, Jonah was the son of this person and this person had this many children and this many wives and this child begat that person and and we get a whole backstory but what i love about jonah is with jonah we find ourselves directly in the middle right like directly in the middle of his story and i love it because nine times out of ten the people who i really want to zone in on are the people who are already directly in the middle of their purpose you understand what I'm saying? And most of us who are probably on this live right now are directly in the middle of whatever it is that God has called us to do. We're not at the beginning stages. Most of us are already launched out there into the world as far as um, preaching the gospel, as far as, as um, ministering is concerned. We're already out there doing our thing. And I love it because Jonah starts off already out there in the middle of doing his thing. And then God has a word for him and has um, an assignment for him. So the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because his wickedness has come before me. We hear God right here directly in, in Jonah's story telling Jonah to do something. Again, I said the title is Lasting Fruit. And the subtitle will be Place, Position, and Posture. So let's kind of talk about those few things. Place. If I had a definition, here I go. If I had a definition. Place. A definition that I found that was really good was a portion of space available or designated for or being used by someone. Place a portion of space available or designated for or being used by someone. It's a really, really good definition. I saw so many definitions of place, but that one stuck out to me. Position would be a person's point of view or attitude towards something. In parentheses, I put point of view because I want us to use that. Um, the definitions between position and posture, you're going to see are very, very, very similar. So when we look at position, I want us to look at it from a point of view. Posture, a particular way of dealing with or considering something. An approach our attitude so we're gonna zone in on that approach and that attitude place a portion of space available or designated to someone being used by someone um position a point of view posture we're gonna say an approach or an attitude i like attitude posture would be an attitude so we're talking about these three three things place position posture jonah starts off the word of the Lord coming to him, telling him to go to Nineveh, a particular place, and to preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me, God said. So God gives Jonah a place, and not only does he give Jonah a place, he begins to tell Jonah his position on that place, his particular point of view of what's going on in that place, right? So God says, look, Go to Nineveh, the place, and preach against it. And here's his position. Because its wickedness has come up before me. My God's point of view is its wickedness has come up, come up before me. I see that they're doing wicked things in that place. And I want to bring it to the forefront. So, Jonah, all I need you to do is go to this specific place. And from my position, the position that I gave you, this is what's happening in this place. I need you to preach against it. 
And that's what we have in Jonah 1. If we jump down to Jonah chapter 1, we're going to go to Jonah chapter 1, which we're still in. We're going to jump down to verses 3 through 15. Jonah 1. We're going to scroll on down to 3 through 15. And we're going to hear what Jonah got going on. So let's go on over to verse 3. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them. And they asked, What have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, What should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And we're going to stop right there. And we're going to kind of hone in on, on what we just read. So, backstory. We, well, not really a backstory, but after we hearing Jonah, God tell Jonah what he want him to do, Jonah decides, you know what, God, I hear what you got to say, and I know you told me to go to Nineveh and preach against it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hop on this boat, and I'm going to go on over to Tarshish, and I'm, you know, trying to get away from what you told me to do. So what we see is Jonah finds himself on this boat, literally running away from God the scripture says trying to get out of what God has called him to do or the specific place that God has called him to do for a specific reason Jonah decides man look I'm God I, I understand but look I'm, I'm, I, I can't do that and so what he does is he runs away from God the scripture says and he finds himself on the boat on his way to Tarshish trying to get away from doing what God told him to do trying to get away from going to the place God told him to go to. So we hear this, Jonah's on the boat, now he's asleep, and the boat, I'm talking about, is going ham outside. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the wind, the rain, it said the boat was getting ready to break up, that the winds and were so strong that the boat was literally beginning to break in half. But Jonah is at the bottom of the boat, not clean out. You know what I'm saying? Not out. Ain't nothing bothering him. Now, these men are on this boat. You know what I'm saying? They up here taking stuff, throwing it off, trying to lighten the boat up because the sea is just r ravaging and, and the winds ain't playing. So they lighten the boat. Maybe if we lighten the boat up, you know what I'm saying? It's going to keep us from the boat from rocking and keeping all this going on. So they lighten the boat thinking that's going to help. Jonah on the boat sleep you know what i'm saying not clean out so 
the men get smart <laughs> and they like look man we done threw almost everything off this boat some on this boat that don't need to be on this boat and we about to go figure that out so they run they go wake Jonah up and what we read we hear they wake Jonah up and they say look bro what you said you was from who you said your God well who your people is like we we need a little more information bro because we didn't did everything we could possibly do and this and, and and the winds and the rain still tearing the boat up who you is bro like where, where you came from man we let you on here not ain't ask you nothing so jonah begins to tell them you know look i'm i'm a hebrew and i serve the one and true living god and they like oh okay yeah you need to go holler at him because this this ain't good this, this this ain't working for us man you might be the reason so after finding out jonah's information they like okay yeah you i do remember you was the one that told us you was running from god yeah you definitely the one that need to be moving around so they get that information out of jonah so they begin to cast lots and basically it's almost like rolling dice um in the old testament they would cast lots whoever the lot landed on whatever they were seeking whatever uh position they took that was that so if they was rolling casting lots in this particular situation they were casting lots to see who need, needed to get off the boat they cast the lights. It landed on Jonah. Yeah, Jonah, you the one that need to move around. So with that being said, they find out that he needs to be moving around. And as we continue to read, they begin to not they begin to throw Jonah off the bus. Off the boat. I'm sorry. Throwing Jonah off the boat calms everything down. Throwing, I'm gonna say that again. Throwing Jonah off the boat calmed everything down so we find jonah just to put this back in perspective we find jonah supposed to go to nineveh find himself on a boat in a place in a particular place which is was a boat on its way to the opposite place of where god told him to go and now the boat is getting hammered with winds with waves and the guys are like bruh somebody not supposed to be on this boat Find out Jonah is the one that needed to be gone off the boat. And they threw dude off the boat. Place. We're going to talk about place for a minute. Again, place is a portion of space available or designated for or being used by someone. Place is very, very important. When it comes to our purpose and what God has us, place is important. Some people may not believe so, but I believe where you are placed is truly important. And we see this with Jonah. So I'm, I got a few points. And the first point I want to get is, is people know when you do not fit. I'm going to say that again. People know when you don't fit. In other words, people know when you're not supposed to be in a place or space that you're particularly in people know that you're not supposed to be there if you go back if we go back and look into the scripture these people weren't particular people that served the same god that jonah served no these were people that served other gods because it said they called on their gods while this wind was coming and nothing happened so we got to figure out what's going on something here is not supposed to be here people know when you don't fit sometimes we find ourselves in places that we do not fit what are you really saying Kieran? what i'm really saying is you staying with specific people in a specific place at a specific time can potentially cause confusion and anguish to the people around you i think i want to say it again because that cut me you staying with specific people in a specific place at a specific time can potentially cause confusion for the people around you remember the boat is getting hammered it's going ham outside and jonah on the boat knocked out ain't worried about a thing running away from god like he ain't got a care in the world but the people around him are being affected you know what i'm saying they getting towed up out here and like i said they crying on other gods but nothing is happening they throwing stuff off the boat but nothing is happening something on this something is still on this boat that shouldn't be on this boat these are non-believers who had the audacity and the intelligence and the wisdom to say 
something ain't right and they honed in people know when you don't fit have you found yourselves in relationships friendships churches even where you don't fit this is the thing and, and for me nine times out of ten we know we already know we shouldn't be in a specific place but because we're comfortable with that specific place because we're comfortable around those specific people we find ourselves staying way longer than what we should have i'm talking about relationships i'm talking about friendships you know not just in the church but with people around people um in this relationship that we know just is not fruitful in a friendship that we know is not fruitful we stay because it's familiar and it's comfortable but we really don't fit and the problem with that is the person or the people they know they know you just kind of on borrowed time but they know and it kind of reminds me um of a few situations in my personal life where i've been in in friendships or relationships for too long god has already called me to a whole nother place but yet i stayed because it felt good i felt comfortable and this is the thing i'm knocked out i'm talking about catching z's but the people around me catching hell you know what i'm saying that's kind that's that's crazy so relationships friendships churches no matter what it is um even spiritually we're in places that we should have been left from and it's causing confusion it's causing anguish for the people around us it wasn't until jonah woke up oh shoot yeah it's it's, it's going hard out here you know that man i i think i need to get off this boat so staying with specific in a specific place with a specific people at a specific time can cause confusion and anguish to those around you relationships friendships churches etc whatever that looks like for you that that is what it is so amazing thing about relationship my dad would tell me that all, all the time about relationships friendships any type of ships he would say look at relationships and friendships anything that end with a ship right uh he would say look at it like a vehicle look at it like a ship it is a particular it is a vehicle it is a a a, a, a i, I want to say it is a bond or an agreement between two people but if that particular ship is not going anywhere then why are you even in it he would tell me treat those things as vehicles you don't want to be in a, a unfruitful relationship right and you don't want to be in an unfruitful friendship and you nine times out of ten don't want to be in an unfruitful church but that's between you and god and what place he called you to right so place is important and i'm gonna say this and this might sting but this is what we have to understand about place sometimes sometimes we have to learn i'm not gonna say sometimes look forget the sometimes learn to let people let you go i'm gonna say that again for the folks who didn't hear me let people let you go i didn't say you let people go you know as believers we like well god told me that person wasn't for me no what if you ain't the person for them let people let you go it is vital to the place that God has put you. Jonah had to take that understanding. Y'all, it's me. I ain't supposed to be on this boat. Throw me off. If you throw me off, nine times out of ten, it's gonna get calm. Y'all boat gonna be all right. Learn to let people let you go. I promise you, it's okay. And the the, the I think the hard part about it is because it takes a hit on our pride. We're so afraid of looking like the bad person. You know, we, we don't want to be the one that's frowned upon or the one that looked at, man. You Look, it's all right to be the bad person. Be the bad person. Let them people let you go. You are causing confusion for not only yourself to some degree. You're causing confusion and anguish to the people around you. Them people know you ain't supposed to be around. Them people know you're supposed to be in another place, in another particular situation. Be careful of staying too long. Let people let you go in other words let them throw you off the boat if you the bad guy be the bad guy but this is vital to your purpose and this is vital 
to your posture and your position. Let people let you go. So we just talked about place, right? Our place has a profound, a profound effect on our position. Position again is the, defin the definition of position is a person's point of view. I said we was going to use point of view. I'm going to read the entirety of it. A person's point of view or attitude towards something. We're going to use point of view in this definition of position. So we, jo Jonah found himself in a place which is on a boat. And obviously he was in the wrong position because it had him thrown, thrown off. But your, your place has a profound effect on your position. And this is why. Depending on the people that you are around, you can take up a particular point of view, right? Depending on who has influence over you, you can take a particular point of view. You can take a particular way of thinking. So we're going to talk about our point of view. Second point, our position, right? Or our point of view should always reflect God's desire. I'm going to say it again. Our position, our point of view, should always reflect God's desire. If you remember in Jonah 1, God said, Go to the great city of Nineveh, talking to Jonah, and preach against it. God's point of view is because, it is wick it, because its wickedness has come before me. God has taken a position, a point of view, when it came to the place Nineveh. Now, this is the amazing thing about it. When we read, because his wickedness has come up before me, if we truly know God, we truly understand his positioning on things. The amazing thing about our position is our position should always reflect, right? God's desire. Our position should come and should be the position of the word. You understand what I'm saying? As believers, our position should be word oriented the source of our position our viewpoint our point of view our thought our processes should be the word of god that is what god desires his desires are laid out plainly in his word go to the great city of, city of nineveh and preach against it go to the place and the position its wickedness has come up before me this is god's point of view the word of god is our position it will always and forever be our position as children of God, as believers. Our position is, our point of view should come from the word of God. That does not negate how you think as a person, but our position, which leads to an action, right, should come from the word of God. So with that being said, if we do not take on that position, it often leads to emotional actions or reactions. Not taking the position of the, of the word of God, not realizing what God desires in a particular place at a particular time around a particular people, we will nine times out of ten act out of our emotion. And we know that sometimes, in most cases, our emotion usually leads to our disobedience, right? Our emotion usually leads to our disobedience. So, Jonah hearing what God tell him to do has a place the place is Nineveh but he finds himself in a, a place that he chose which was the boat and that boat got him thrown into a particular position right so he was thrown into the well and now in this well something happens Jonah's emotional action right his disobedience caused him to be thrown into the well Jonah held, this is what's, what's really, really key about it. Jonah held a different position, a different point of view from God when it pertained to Nineveh and what he wanted him to do. Nine times out of ten as believers, I want y'all to really hear this. We have a different position, a different point of view than what God's point of view is. And we find ourselves in this struggle match with God about what he wants us to do to do is what he want us to do we struggle with the position of god so we find ourselves in other places 
in other positions that we weren't nine nine times out of ten weren't necessarily designed to be in that place but god let it be so right so because we're struggling with the position that god has on a particular topic a particular situation a particular um you know thought or process that god has already said in his word we have a different position we find ourselves struggling with it right so that usually leads to an emotional action which leads to our, our disobedience we know one thing about disobedience and we want to know one thing about the opposite which is obedience obedience dictates our direction right so if obedience directs us then obviously disobedience moves us in a totally different direction and we saw that jonah chose to be disobedient based on his position being different than god's position he was like god i got a different point of view i don't you know so i'm gonna take a whole nother direction right so jonah does this takes a whole nother direction and gets thrown off of this boat out of this place that he wasn't um supposed to be in thrown off of this boat and now he's into the well the fish we all know about jonah we all know about the well um in jonah 2 we find jonah in this well and jonah verse 2 and 1 says and this is what's amazing because inside the well something happens i think i said it already but something happened in the well right find himself because he had a difference of positions back in an uncomfortable space back in an uncomfortable place because of his position right uncomfortable so from inside of the well it says in jonah 2 and 1 from inside the fish jonah prayed to the lord his god i'm gonna read that again it says in matter of fact i would much rather you see it jonah 2 verse 1 it says from inside of the well right i'm gonna make that beef y'all from inside of the fish i'm sorry jonah prayed to the lord his god something happened inside of that well posture happened inside of that well and we're going to jump on over to jonah 2 just so y'all can get an understanding of what really happened to jonah inside of this fish jonah 2 from inside the fish jonah prayed to the lord his god he said in my distress i called to the lord and he answered me from deep in the realm of the dead i called for help and you listened to my cry you hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, Salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Amen. So it says, And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. We find Jonah inside this fish, praying to the Lord. Again, Jonah 2 and 1 says, From inside the fish Jonah prayed to the lord his god we find jonah taking almost a 180 right inside this fish something happened posture happened inside of this fish right we said posture was an attitude the point of view of attitude we're using the word attitude a uh, attitude change happened inside of this fish as we read it as you just heard you know the app read jonah took a different attitude a different tone his conversation changed he understood something lord i am in a desperate place right now and i need you so his posture went almost from well actually not almost it went from rebellion to repentance 
he had a certain posture. His heart began to open up because now he's in a fish and he's close to death. And he's saying, okay, God, I understand. Is what you want me to do or is this, right? So Jonah finds himself relenting and repenting in this well. The amazing thing about it is when you read chapter two, it was done in a form of praise and worship. He goes from God, I'm in despair, but you, oh Lord, you know, he begins to pray. He begins to pull on the goodness of God. He begins to pull on the character of God by praising and worshiping him in despair. God, my attitude has changed towards you, right? Because you are a good God. You are a God that saved me. And I will say that salvation comes from God. My attitude has changed. And we read at the end of that, at the end of chapter two, that the well spews him out on dry land. So he, his attitude, his posture changed. And what happened was God says, son, I hear you. And not only do I hear you, fam, I'm going to put you right back in the place where I started. He spews him out on, on dry land. So what disobedience took him in the wrong direction, right? Obedience put him right back in the place that he needed to be. That's the amazing thing about God and us being in purpose. Yes, it takes a split decision. It takes just a change in our posture, a change in our attitude, a change in our mindset. It takes obedience for us to be right back in the place. Obedience fixes the everything, right? Obedience took place and he was back directed. We have to submit to that direction. And the only way to submit to the direction of God is to be obedience. Remember, I said obedience dictates direction. Obviously, that disobedience takes us in a totally different direction. So now that he's obedient, he's back submitted to direction. Okay, God, it's your way and not my way. I'm back directed by you. I'm back submitted to that direction. So we find this Jonah is spit out his well and bam chapter three god hits him again and we're gonna look at chapter three i got it right here for us on screen so we don't even have to run um back to the app bam jonah chapter three verses two through three new international version again it says go to the great city of nineveh and proclaim to it the message i give you now this is what's important it says go to the great city of nineveh and proclaim it to the Proclaim to it the message I give you. Next sentence says, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now that his posture has changed, he is submitted back to the direction of God, being obedient. It says, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. This is the amazing thing I love about the first point. God says, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I gave. Go back and do what I told you from jump. This is the thing. We be wanting God to give us a whole nother purpose, a whole nother plan. Like, okay, God, just because I ain't do it the last time, you might find something new for me to do. No, God has predestined something for you to do from the beginning. Guess what? You already in it, but you still trying to find excuses and find other ways to do what God called you to do. No, do what God called you to do. Do what he asked you to do. Guess what? His his mindset and his plans did not change because yours did, right? We often do that. I'm saying yours, but I'm talking to me. We often say, okay, God, give me something new to do because I'm not comfortable with this that you got me doing. No, God ain't changing. He said, go back and do what I told you to do from jump. Your posture has changed. You have an understanding who's directing. Do what I told you to do. So we find Jonah going, it says, Now Nineveh was a very large city, and it took three days to go through it. We find Jonah back being obedient, right? And now he's doing what God told him to do. He finds himself in Nineveh, and in the scripture, if you read it, um, he goes throughout Nineveh. And he said, hey, Nineveh, y'all got 40 days. Y'all better fast. I'm talking about you fat from people to babies to animals. Fast. Because God will overthrow Nineveh in 40 days. Again, said Nineveh was very large, so it took him three days to go throughout Nineveh, right? Maybe Jonah was running. He probably like, Lord, I don't feel like walking three days. My feet already hurt. I just got off a boat. 
I was just sitting in the fish. I really don't want to walk three days. He probably felt like that from jump. I ain't trying to go to Nineveh from three days, but we're going to really get into Jonah's uh, intentions, right? So uh, three days he's going through it and he's saying, look, fast. I'm talking about from the oldest to the youngest, from the sheep to the lambs, to the goats, to the dogs. Fast, put on sackcloth. And we know the sackcloth was 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 a, a particular garment that was that um, took on the symbol like a mourning. Um, the symbol usually meant that they were submitting to something. God, we're we're back in humble submission. So they put on this sackcloth. Even the animals had to put on sackcloth, and they put the sackcloth on, and they did exactly what God desired for them to do. And we read it in Jonah three and ten. I'm not gonna jump to it, but in Jonah three and ten it says, "When God saw what they did." And how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. That's the type of God we serve, right? When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Remember, he said in 40 days, Nineveh is going to be overthrown. That was the message that Jonah was supposed to preach against Nineveh, right? That was the position that God took. But ultimately, God's position from jump was that they be saved. It wasn't so much the calamity that God was bringing to Nineveh, right? But it was the repentant heart that he wanted Nineveh to take. It was the position, it was the posture that he wanted Nineveh to have, right? So what happened was they did exactly what God told them to do. And he relented. God drew back and he said, you know what? I am not going to do what i originally said was going to happen that happens in jonah 3 and we see that the people are sad the king was the one who went and said hey everybody stop doing what you're doing put on the sackcloth i heard i heard what god said and it's going to be done and god relented we find ourselves in jonah 4 and this is kind of where we get close to the ending we see that nineveh has taken on a particular posture we saw jonah take on a particular posture right his attitude changed he began to be obedient and he went to do what god told him to do and god had grace on nineveh because nineveh took a particular posture right they began to repent and cry out to god and be under submission and we find the same thing that happened with jonah right he was he was he was pulled out of the well right he was saved. He said salvation belongs to God, right? He was rescued. We see the same thing happen in Nineveh. So Jonah does what God calls him to do, and he runs over when he's finished to a particular place again. We're going to run to Jonah 4, and I'm going to let y'all I'm gonna let y'all hear that. And, man, we, we, we are getting really, really, you know, close to the end. So let's, let's, hear, what, let's hear what's happening. Jonah 4. But to Jonah this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, Take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the plant, so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die, and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, and I'm so angry, I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. 
And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? That's good. So we see Jonah is finished with the assignment that God has given him, right? And he finds himself a ways away from the city and he builds his shelter where, you know, he kind of gets some rest. He gets some shade from the scorching heat. And the word of God in John 4 says, after all of it, after him seeing what God did to the people, he was angry. Jonah was angry. It's crazy because not a Bible app. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I ain't working for you no more. It's cool. After all this, Jonah was angry. Jonah told God, isn't this what I, I, I knew this was going to happen when I was at home. This is what I was trying to say. You was going to send me over here, scare these people just so you can save these people. That's basically what Jonah was saying. Jonah was angry that God had grace on these people, right? That's crazy because we're talking about the same Jonah who was just stuck in a whole a whole well you know what i'm saying he wasn't stuck in no 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 sea bag he wasn't stuck his man was stuck in a well in in a fish and his posture changed his attitude changed and god delivered him out of the well but now he's angry that god has delivered these people place position posture remember the title of this entire message is lasting fruit lasting fruit what lasting fruit got to do with place position and posture right Keon? okay we talked about place god putting us in a specific place place is important we talked about position place having a profound effect on our position our point of view what we think and our position should nine times out of ten be the position of god the position of the word of god right as believers we are positioned to think the things that god thinks right even though he said he says our his thoughts are higher than our thoughts but based on the word of god these are god's thoughts and actions we should take these positions we should take these points of view right so we have a place that affects our positioning and we have that position, that point of view, and it affects our posture. But for some reason, Jonah's posture is still off. In the well, he was crying out and relenting and repenting, but his posture is still off. After doing what God called him to do, after going to the Pacific place, after going and preach the particular sermon God told us to do, or... Uh, Warning the particular person God told us to warn or reaching out to the particular person God told us to reach out. We still hold a posture that's still not right. How many of y'all have been in, in this place? I know I have. Well, I'm like, God, in a, in a previous season, I felt a little closer. I felt a little different. I felt, a, you know, my posture it's not the same. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stronger. I feel a little wiser, but my posture doesn't feel the same. I don't feel as submitted. I don't feel as free. I don't feel as close. For some reason, Jonah did all that God told him to do in his posture was still off. Why is that? It's, it's one simple thing, right? And it's another point that I want us to get into. And, and this probably is the last point for this message because... Man, God, God, God is, 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 is really revealing some stuff. Position, right? We talked about position. Position, your position, your point of view will always reveal your true posture, right? I'm going to say it again. Your position will always reveal your true posture. Yes, Jonah's posture changed inside the world. His attitude change inside of the well to repent and relenting but let me tell you something jonah's position never changed he still did not want god to go and save these people and it was revealed after he did what god wanted him to do that's crazy right after you actually be obedient to god 
he even in his obedience even in in his purpose right even in doing what god tell us to do even in preaching even in praying even in laying on hands even in in whatever god has called us to do using our giftings our positions still be off we still hold personal positions and so what happened was joe jonah i'm sorry still held that position that he had from jump and that position revealed his true posture yes jonah did what, what god told him to do how many of us are imperfect and still do what call, god calls us to do right that is not a qualifier right that is not a qualifier right okay position reveals true posture jonah still held the same position why is that important because if your posture is still off, you will miss not what God is trying to do for the city. You won't miss God saving Nineveh. No, you're going to aid in God saving Nineveh. You're going to miss what God want to do in you. Posture will reveal your true, I mean, I'm sorry, your position will, will reveal your true posture. This particular assignment was as much for Jonah as it was for Nineveh. I'm going to say that again. Your particular purpose and assignment is as much for you than it is for whoever the other person is. Yes, they will be delivered. That is God's desire. But God's desire also is that you be changed by it. Is that you bear fruit by it because of it. Is that your heart, your attitude will change because of you seeing God be God. Jonah watched God position and posture shift to save a people, right? His position was always, he just told Jonah, look, go over there and I need you to preach against it. Jonah was hung, you know, he was happy for, oh, oh yeah, we finna go test some stuff up. You know, God said, God, <laughs> Jonah went over there was like, look, God said he finna come down and he finna tear this mug up. He finna send some people through here. You know, dumb. We finna, you know, that's how he was feeling. Like, yeah, I'm with God on that. But when he knew one thing about God, he knew that God was a loving and a compassionate God, right? And his desires for that all come into repentance, right? He understood that. So he knew, you know what? God might really say these folks. And that wasn't his desire. That wasn't his point of view. His position was God, tear this mug up. And the true plan of God was to reveal that in Jonah. Nine times out of ten, your purpose is designed to reveal something in you. The Bible says we grow, right, from glory to glory, right, faith to faith to glory to glory. Nine times out of ten, as you minister, as you move, as you do the things of God, these things are designed, right, to work for you. Is designed to produce something called fruit. We all know about fruit. We know that we produce fruit, right? And I'm getting to the end of this thing. We know, right, that we're supposed to be producing fruit for the kingdom of God holistically, right? If we go to Romans 8 and 28 and verse 29, which is one of my really, really, really good scriptures, y'all. Well, probably one of my really, like my favorite scriptures. Romans 8, 28, 29 says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God, this is 29, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Romans 28 is that, that scripture that we all remember. All things work for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. We love that scripture. And then God goes on to tell us what he foreknew. Those he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Your purpose is conforming you to the image of God. It's not making you more important than anybody. It's not making people less than you, but it is conforming you, right? Holistically, God's desire is that we be conformed, right, to the image of Christ. That is the gospel that we were brought into salvation, right? We were chosen for salvation. And holistically, we become like Christ. John was given a place. The place was Nineveh. He was given a position. A position was to preach against the wickedness in the land. The posture was that the people were supposed to take was repentance, right? And it was supposed to reveal a particular posture that Jonah had so that he can grow, right? 
So Jonah chose the boat in, 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 in the boat that was going to Tarsha. That was the, pl the, 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 the the place the vehicle that he chose he got to a place right which was in the fish and he positioned himself right in the well to where he had to take on another posture another attitude right jonah was standing on his position that god i don't truly want these people to be saved god i don't truly want these people to be saved i'm standing on my position even in doing the work he was standing on his point of view and it affected his posture it revealed his posture right some of us are running from god revealing of who we are <laughs> that's good some of us are running from the revealing of who we are based on us not being able to get over ourselves purpose is stagnant right i'm i want to say that right because i did not say that right purpose our purpose is thank you thank you holy spirit is stagnant because our growth is stagnant and it's nine times out of ten centered around our particular position we can't fully get over ourselves jonah couldn't get over his personal position and yes he was still required to do the work but he was not growing you hear me he was required to do the work and God did for Nineveh what he wanted to do for Nineveh. But son, I got something I want to do for you. And I used Nineveh to reveal to you who you were. You know what I'm saying? God, sometimes we run from that, right? Because a particular posture is unfamiliar for us. This stuff affects our growths. And guess what? It creates a view that is contrary to God. That's a, a, a really, really good statement. This affects our growth and it creates a view that's contrary to God and the gospel. Sometimes our, our positions, our point of views are contrary to the gospel, even in our purpose, are contrary to what God holistically designed, right? And then it's not beneficial for the body. And this creates what I would call a violent gospel, right? We create a violent gospel, a gospel that is not full of love, a gospel that preaches against our brothers and sisters without grace, right? Without love, right? We create this violent gospel. Is a God, you tear them up, and I'm with you in the tearing up of tearing down of people. God is not in the business, right, of tearing down other people. So we preach this violent gospel because our posture isn't corrected. And the fruit that was supposed to be given, right? The fruit that was supposed to be produced in the situation, like in the purpose, in Jonah going to Nineveh and doing what God told him to do. The fruit, the fruit, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the fruit that was supposed to be produced, right? The, the the grace, the mercy, seeing God's grace and mercy, that was supposed to happen to him. He was supposed to be merciful as well. God was trying to produce something in Jonah. And what happened was he lacked it. And that fruit didn't fully last. We're talking about fruit that lasts, lasting fruit, and how our position, how our purpose, and how our posture is important. We want fruit that lasts. We're running nine times out of ten away from God to run from fruit that lasts. Because we have our own thoughts. We have our own ideas of what we want God to do in particular. people. You know what? I, I had to get over that when God told me to bless somebody that I didn't necessarily like. Right? He told me, to, as a matter of fact, he told me to bless somebody that had just hurt me on purpose. He was like, no, I'm going to show you how to be merciful. I'm going to show you how to love regardless. Yes, they hurt you. Yes, I allowed them to hurt you. But I want you to bless them. Right? Yeah, And it hurt. When I tell you it hurt. But it created something in me and it showed me something about God. John 15 and 16, I'm going to get out of here. King James Version, it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. We want to be, oh, God chose me to do something in this earth. He chose me to, 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 to tear down the, 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 the devil's kingdom. And yes, he did, but holistically, he chose you to bring forth fruit fruit aids in that and that your fruit right in john 15 it says in 16 your fruit should remain it should last right that whatsoever ye shall ask 
of and the Father, I'm sorry, whatever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. We're going to hone in on this says that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Fruit can leave, right, based on our posture, right? We go out and we do a thing. Man, we, we, we wait on God to do something in our lives and we get, you know, we gain the fruit of uh, 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 what long suffering or, or patience, right? And then, man, we get that and we like, okay, God, yeah, God bless me. And you go out and you preach that word, man. Just, just, just wait. Just wait on God. He gonna do it for you. And guess what? Two months later, you need something else done, and you forgot that message that you preach because that fruit didn't remain. So you back tugging, you back in a tug of war because your position is still the same. Your posture has reverted back. God wouldn't have told us our fruit had to remain if he didn't know that it could leave. I'm going to leave y'all with this scripture, and I'm going to get off of here because I feel like I've been on here for a long time. John 15, verse 5 through 13, it says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned, right? If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, that word abide could be could be said as remain, right? It could also be be used as the word remain. I want y'all to pay attention to that. Sorry, y'all, I'm, 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 I'm a teacher. It's right in here. It says, if ye abide, we're going to say, if ye remain in me, this is King James, and my words remain in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done for you, right? Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father have loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. What Christ is showing us is that love thing, right? If you abide in me, if you remain, your fruit will remain, right? Because my desire is that you bear much fruit. And yes, I'm going to put you in positions, right? I'm going to put you in places so these places can draw that fruit out of you, right? And then that posture will reveal to you your true intentions, right? And now that you can see your true intentions, your fruit can remain, right? Because you can take the posture, right, that I have. You can take the position that I have, and that fruit can remain as long as you remain in me. He said, these things I have spoken unto you, that your joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, right, that ye love one another. Come on, y'all, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man. Than this, then the man laid down his life for his friends. A scripture that we're very, very familiar with. Jonah was lacking love in that in that in that department of grace, right? God gave him a place. God has given us a place. He's put us around particular people so that things can be cultivated, that these ships, right? can be cultivated that 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 will that we can relate to people that relate to us right i looked at the greek and if you break relate down it means to bear right so we're around people that can bear right our, our, our issues that can bear you know whatever the problem is that we bear each one another's burdens right we're in relationships and we're in places right that our anointing like right can do and can grow and can be shaped if we look at that word ship and in the relate and friend it gets broken down into the shaping so god puts us in a particular place and it puts us around particular people that we can grow from that we can grow with and from these people we develop a position right and that position nine times out of ten should be a position from the word of god god's desires and that creates a posture in us and we talked about that position that position nine times out of ten reveals our true intentions so if we take the position that god is our intentions 
can be what God's intentions is. Now, this is the thing that people don't account for, that we are flesh. And sometimes, yes, I know what the word of God says, but I have a personal opinion. I know what the word of God says, but I have a personal view. And I'm not sure if I totally agree with the point of view of God, right? So what that does, that leads to disobedience. And we saw that with Jonah. So what we see is that God desires through our purpose that we're already in to do what he called us to do that we can be revealed to ourselves and this is why place is important this is why position is important this is why posture is important because these things create fruit that lasts you're running from what god told you want to do because you don't want to be developed right you want to stay in a place that's comfortable you want to continue to have the position that you've been having right and you don't necessarily want that posture you might not think this is what it is but this is the war that is going on inside of us even in our purpose so with that being said i love you all I pray that we, our hearts and our minds are changed by what we just said. Thank y'all for this time. Lasting fruit. Y'all, I'm, I'm trying not to be, you know, you know, I'm trying not to be extra. So, I just want to thank God for this opportunity. You see right here at the bottom, we got Rapture Ready Productions. Follow us. This has been That Good Rule. And I just got one more point, man. It, the Holy Spirit is real. And, and, and he's alive and he is moving on my end of this camera. I pray to God that he's moving on your end of the camera. One last thing I got to say to everybody. Two, two things. Number one, I love y'all. And number two, I got to go. Peace out.